What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Last Principles. I am your host, M.A., and tonight I want to talk to you guys about uh, a custom that is a staple in ICOC life, and that is encouragement dating, or as some people might call it, pity dating. I'll let you guys be the the judge on that. Um, Before we dive into it, we got to talk about a couple of things that um, are the only ways this thing makes sense, right? So a couple of elements from uh, the ICOC uh, that I've talked about in a couple of videos before. One, you got to talk about the fact that the ICOC believes that they are the only church, the only real Christians, and therefore the only people who are saved, the only people who are going to heaven, right? Also, we got to talk about, I believe it's 2 Corinthians 6. I will correct myself in the uh, in the video uh, if I get this wrong, but 2 Corinthians 6, I believe, is the scripture that talks about being unequally yoked. Now, the ICOC is not the only organization or the only branch of Christianity who gets this wrong, but that scripture, uh, talking about being unequally yoked, is what is used to say that you should not date or marry non-Christians. So, of course, because of you know the ICOC stance that, that they are the only church, because th- that they are the only Christians, that means that you do not date outside the ICOC, you do not marry outside the ICOC. Now, I'm going to hit this really quick, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. That scripture, if you look at it in context, meaning you look at all the surrounding passages there in that, in that section, this says nothing about dating or marriage it's talking about a whole bigger picture i'm not gonna again i'm not gonna go into too much detail with it i'll actually link a a good resource for it in the description but suffice it to say while there is some wisdom to be had in dating and marrying someone who has the same convictions as you uh, someone who believes the same as you who is on the same page as you yes there is some wisdom in that but that scripture nor and anywhere else in the Bible does it say that it's a sin to marry someone who is not a Christian. Also, the fact that, again, in context, that scripture has nothing to do with marriage, has nothing to do with dating. Dating isn't even in the Bible. To take that scripture and build a whole doctrine around it, to build a whole conviction about something that is not even about, that's problematic to say the least. That's all I'll say on that. But the main point, ICOC believes they're the only Christians, they're the only people going to heaven. Couple that with their misuse of 2 Corinthians 6 saying that, oh, well, do not be equally yoked uh, means don't date or marry outside the church. Marry those two things together. And that's why that's how we have the basis for encouragement dating. What encouragement dating means that, okay, since the disciples, you know, anyone single should not go outside of the church for dating. You know, let's uh, let's make sure that they're not tempted by the world to uh, you know, they're not tempted by anyone in the world, right? So let's have, and you know, the more as I hear myself say that, I start to realize just how much more of a tool for control this was. You know, let's um, let's do what we can to make sure that nobody's going outside the organization to get their dating and romantic needs met, right? So encouragement dating well what happened is um brothers and sisters go out you know when i say brothers and sisters i mean you know members of the church um it was a custom to have them go out on dates that were not romantic to have them to spend time with each other uh, to encourage each other we're going to get to that in just a moment um to do that so that way they would not be tempted by people in the quote-unquote world you know to not be led astray to not be um they would have it seem as though okay we don't want you guys to be pulled away into um into sin or to be caught up with somebody who is not a christian so there is a bit of you know some nobility there they're like okay we're trying to look out for y'all but again it really is just a lot of control there you're trying to control who is dating who so yeah you're, you're going on these dates to encourage one another and you're going out with on dates with people you're not interested in at all. Yeah, you know, for the most part, the vast majority of your encouragement dates are with people who you don't like at all. You're just um, going out with pe- going out with another brother, I mean, uh, going out with a sister, going out with a brother, just to you know keep each other from being tempted by the world, right? So this sounds good on paper, but here's where it starts to go left. Here's, here's where it starts to get a bit problematic, right? 
So just speaking from a brother's perspective on this, uh, I'm, I'm speaking from personal experience here. You're pretty much, as soon as you get baptized, sometimes even right after you get out of the baptistry, you still wet ain't even dried off yet, and they're talking to you about doing these encouragement days. And you're, you're, as a brother, you're mandated all, uh, pretty much to take a sister out every single weekend. Now, for me, this, this, this whole subject is a bittersweet, double-edged sword kind of thing because, you know, as I said in one of my previous videos, you're talking to somebody who has, who at, at that time had never been on a date, had never had a girlfriend, had never kissed a girl, had never had sex, and somebody with no game, right? So you're telling me that I get to ask these uh, beautiful spiritual sisters out on uh, these... You're telling me I get to ask these beautiful spiritual women out on dates and they're not going to tell me no? Sign me up. Let's do this, right? Now, in my naivety, naivete, I don't know if I'm saying that word right, I was, na I was pretty naive, right? As I'm told that this is how we do things, I'm thinking that the sisters in the church are saying yes to these dates because they want to. I have no idea, and in hindsight, I don't know how I didn't come to this conclusion sooner. In hindsight, I find out these sisters were told they could not say no at all to these dates, which that that's that's a whole thing in and of itself there. The fact that the sisters, the women in the church were, were robbed of their autonomy, you know, being told that they could not say no to these encouragement dates, right? And we'll come back to that a little bit later, but yeah. So the, guy, the brothers were told they had to take somebody out every single Saturday. I mean, it was usually Saturday. That's when we normally did it. You know, I've, been, I've had Sunday dates. I've had Friday dates. I might have had a random in the middle of the week date. But depending on what part of the country you were in, your mileage may vary on that. I've known, I've heard of some ministries where, no, 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 you have to do it on Saturday. Whereas I guess the ministries I was in, it was I was like, hey, it's, it's usually Saturday, but if you do something on a different day, nobody's gonna bat an eye. So we're called to do this every, you know, every weekend. You ask somebody out, you may or may not like the person. More often than not, you didn't like the person, and you just go on a regular, you go on a regular date. Um, you know, you you pick the person up, you pick the sister up. If you're a brother, if you're a sister, you're getting picked up. Um, you go do whatever. It might be a typical dinner. It might be you go for a walk in the park. You might go to a, for example, like if since I live in Atlanta, you might go to a Dave and Buster's or something. Um, you might go to a go kart thing. You might go do pup pup mini golf or whatever. All all the all these types of things. And because of the ICOC's brand of purity culture, we're gonna I'm gonna do a whole video on that. That's a um, because of the ICOC's brand of purity culture. You were all but mandated to do double dates every single time because you know they didn't trust us to not have self-control you know you know god forbid you go out on a single date and you're just gonna be like just overcome with lust the whole time so you're gonna be tempted to um you're gonna be tempted to do you're gonna be tempted to sin basically if you go out on, uh, go out on a single date with someone in the church so there was the there was always you got to do a double date you got to do a double date and I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably say this again when I do a video on the purity culture thing. If I if my date lives near me but my double doesn't, I gotta go get my double first, way across town, and come back to get my date. You know that's how that's how weird that's how deep the purity culture went in uh, in the ICOC. But yes, you had to get a double date or. Or more. Sometimes we did. On, we sometimes we did group dates. Um, but yeah, now I, I say this is bittersweet because I always had fun on these dates. You know, I never had. I won't say never. The only times I had bad dates were actually when I it was steady dating when I had a girlfriend, and you know we was going through some things at the time. So those were the only bad dates I ever had. Outside of that, all of my encouragement dates were good. You know, I've, I've never not enjoyed myself. You know, I, I may or may not have been attracted to the person I was on a date with, but I always had fun. I always had good conversation. There might have been some meh or average kind of dates, but I never felt like I was wasting my time, you know. So, 
so what was customary was, you know, the, the brothers asked the sisters out, take them out on a date, blah, blah, blah. And the sister would either the next day at, um, at Sunday service or at midweek or wherever, the sister would have some kind of thank you for the brother. Like it might be a card, it may be a store-bought card, it might be a, a handmade card. Those, those tended to be the best ones to me anyway. You know, the, the, the sister, she really liked, you know, if she really had a good time on the date, she might come with some cookies or some brownies or some, some cupcakes or whatever. I had a sister bring me a whole behind chocolate cake one time. I happened to mention the day before on the date that I like chocolate cake. And yeah, that, wow. Um, had I not actually had an interest at the time, this, this interest would go on to be my ex. I won't go on to be my girlfriend. Now I'm an ex-girlfriend. But had I not had an interest at the time, she might have become my interest from, from that. But like, wow. Anyway, uh, so that was customary. You know, the sisters showing... Uh, some kind of thank you after and within the week of, of the day um, so there was there was good in it there was there was good in it because you know like I said I didn't have I never had any dating experience before the ICLC so this would I never had to worry about women asking the, the, the women in the church like being expected to be overly wined and dined you know there's always that $200 date minimum argument that happens on Twitter seasonally or more. I never had to worry about that. I never had to worry about um, was I expected to try to sleep with the girl or, you know, the, for the sisters, they never had to worry about a brother trying to sleep with them um, on the day. So that was that was the good part. You know, I, I felt like you know, even though deep down I knew we were in a bubble because in real life it doesn't happen like this, I, I did appreciate you know, not having those expectations put on me. Like, even before I became a quote-unquote disciple, I still wasn't quite sure if I wanted to, like, just have random sex. Like, I wasn't sure I wanted to save myself, but I also was like, you know, I think my conviction back then, if you can call it that, was I'm only going to do it if it's somebody that, at the very least, I have to like her enough to co-parent with her. You know, because I don't want to, you know, father a child and then me and the baby mom don't get along. So that was where I was at before I um, got involved with the ICLC. So, like I said, on one hand, these encouragement dates, you know, they sheltered us from the craziness that was happening in real life. Um, and I got to, I got consistent, you know, male female interaction with, with, with the sisters, you know, and that was something I was lacking prior to um so i actually had you know a social life i actually had a dating life now he, the, the bad part about all of this for me is one again with the brothers we were mandated every single saturday to do these encouragement dates if you weren't if, if you were a brother who might have was known to go several weekends in a row without doing an encouragement date you were considered to be struggling you know you weren't doing well spiritually you were considered prideful and or selfish or you're, you're selfish you're not giving your time the time to the sisters the sisters are struggling because they're not being taken out on dates because they're not being encouraged right so that just even people in real life i'm trying not to say the world that's that that was the terminology for so long it's so ingrained in me i'm having to fight to not say the world i'm what i really mean is real life but even people in real life the ones who go out on dates as much as they want to they don't go out every saturday they don't go out every weekend so why are we i mandated to do that and i don't care how many dating devos you've been to i don't care how many um uh, lessons on dating you get in the ICOC that tell you, oh, well, you don't have to spend money on dates. You don't have to, um, you know, you can just go to the park and feed the ducks. You can only do that so many times, right? That's going to cost you some money. Like, I don't know how much money I would have saved had I not been trying to go out on a date every Saturday or every other Saturday at least, right? So there's that with the, with the, with the brothers, like, Actually, I'm going to give you all an example just, just, just to show you how crazy this was. When I was in Tallahassee, I was at uh, Florida A&M, 
And so me and the brothers who were in the FAMU ministry, a good chunk of us, we lived on campus. We didn't have jobs. We pretty much had no money except for maybe like when our net check came through and if our, if our parents decided to send us a spending money. And we didn't have cars. We were on the we were riding the bus. The, major, the vast majority of the sisters in, at Pammy's ministry, they had their own apartments, they had their own jobs, they had their own cars. And a lot of them were a little bit older than us. I am not implying at all that the sisters should have been taking us out. I'm not saying that. But it just seemed a bit backwards that the, us, the guys who were broke, didn't have cars, didn't have jobs, were taking out the sisters every weekend and they had jobs, they had cars, they had their own apartments. I'm like, that. that's just lopsided there. And again, I'm not saying the sisters should have been taking us out. That happened from now on. That happened every now and then. You know, again, your mileage may vary depending on what ministry you were in. There were some regions where, you know, that was cool. Nobody mattered than I about it. And then there's certain ministries where it was like, oh no, well, I, I think the brothers should just lead everything. So, so they twisted the whole concept of men needing to lead. That's a whole nother story in and of itself. We ain't gonna touch that today. Um, but they would twist the fact that men needed to lead, uh, and somehow that meant the sisters should never ask the brothers out. There's gonna be a lot of examples here where I'm talking in, in, on my channel where I'm gonna talk about scriptures being twisted, right? So that's one of them. Anyway, so so there there it is on on, on the brothers and not for the sisters. I can't speak for them, but I've heard stories, I've heard um, testimonies, if you if you will, of just just how bad it was on the sisters. And I remember um, one brother that I knew. He shared with me that some sister shared with him that, okay, this is when I was in Atlanta. I moved back to Atlanta by then, several years after this anyway. And so when I was in the campus ministry, the uh, campus would, the campus was its own entity and we would meet at, you know, hotel ballroom, ballroom or whatever. And this is before I knew, actually this is how I found out that the sisters were not allowed to say no. Not only were they not allowed to say no, if someone, if a brother asked them out and they already had plans, they were expected to cancel these plans and say yes. I didn't know that. I'm a, for, you know, I'm like, if, if, because I have asked sisters out before and they already had plans and they said no. And I'm like, cool. By all means, if you got plans already, do those plans. But the, but this sister, but these sisters told this, uh, told my, my boy, well, what happened is if midweek came along, because normally you would ask, you would ask the sister out on Sunday to take her out that following Saturday, you know, a week in between, right? Sometimes Wednesday would come around and some brothers don't have dates yet, some sisters don't have dates yet. And some of these sisters who were not asked out on Sunday had already made plans for the upcoming Saturday, you know, to do whatever. They might study, they might be hanging out with their friends, they might be doing whatever. So these sisters would hide in the bathroom after uh, after midweek so that the brothers who were scrambling to try to find a date for Saturday could not ask them out. What madness is this to drive the sisters to have to hide in the bathrooms so that they couldn't be asked out? You know, you would think, hey, just say no, I got plans. But they were told or highly encouraged or mandated or all but forbidden to say no, even if they had plans. And again, that's just going back to the whole the sisters not having the autonomy to, uh, of, the, of, their, of their own self to say no. These sisters would sometimes have to say yes to brothers who were creepy, brothers who had horrible hygiene, brothers who were just straight up awkward. You know, I'm, and I'm not trying to diss any brothers who are awkward. We all had our awkward phases, most of us anyway. So I'm not, you know, dissing that, but it's just like, the sister should be able to say no, just like the brother shouldn't have had to ask every single Saturday or take somebody out every single Saturday. Um, so there's that on the sister's end of it. Like I can only imagine just the craziness of that. And then of course, to some degree, it ends up being a pity day. You're asking out or being asked out by somebody who you would never go out on a date with, but because we're supposed to be encouraging each other, uh, then we have to we have to do this thing. Like I said, I have I enjoyed all of mine, but I can imagine how it might not be super pleasant for other people. 
Um, and then let's, let's tackle the whole idea of encouragement, right? And so there's plenty of scriptures that talk about encouragement. The one, um, I can't remember the address of the scripture right now, but encourage one another daily as long as it's called today. Encourage one another daily. So let's think about the fact that the word encourage does not mean date. The concept of dating as we know it today, and, and which is the concept of dating which we're talking about within the ICOC, that did not exist back when that scripture or any other scriptures in the Bible that talk about encouragement. Dating didn't exist back then. So when we talk about encouraging people in the Bible, there's no way that that should automatically mean take me out on a date or take somebody out on a date. Even back when I was still fully committed in the ICOC, something didn't sit quite right with me. The fact that we had allowed the word encouragement to become synonymous with date. Yes, these dates were encouraging, but to encourage does not mean to take out on a date. It would, it would not be, um, it wasn't uncommon to hear during like a sermon or a, a Friday devotional for singles and or for campus. It wasn't uncommon to hear someone um, say, oh, the sisters aren't being encouraged. The sisters aren't being encouraged. Brothers, you're not, you're not being encouraging to the sisters. Oh, this, this, this sisters who haven't been encouraged in a year, the sisters who haven't been encouraged in months. What they're really saying is there are sisters who haven't been taken out on a date in months. There are sisters who haven't been taken out on a date in in a year or so. Oh, the sisters aren't being encouraged. They're really saying the sisters aren't being taken out on dates. Dude, just say that. Just say exactly that. Just say they haven't been taken out on a date. Just say this sister hasn't been on a date. If you're a sister, say if you're a sister, just plain say, hey, I haven't been taken out in a year. I haven't been taken out in X amount of time. Stop saying Oh, I haven't been encouraged. There are plenty of other ways you can encourage someone. Because I'm pretty sure those other ways were what they really meant in the Bible when they said encourage one another daily. You can ask how someone is doing spiritually. You can um, follow, like if you've been talking with a person, you can follow up on them, follow up with them on something that they might have been struggling with before. You can share a scripture with somebody. You can pray for the person. You can just have a decent human conversation with the person. That's how you encourage somebody outside of going out, going out on a date. So that 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 became very problematic to me. I'm like, how do, how do we allow encourage encourage to become synonymous with date, right? So yeah, those are my thoughts on encouragement dating. Yes, did yes, I enjoyed it when I when I was there. I never had a bad date outside of the one relationship, um, steady relationship I had. But just the whole. Just the idea of having to do it every every Saturday, the sisters not being able to say no. That I mean, that's just a that's a whole mess of problematic right there. Just that in and of itself, the sisters not being allowed to say no. Again, the, the, the word allow there that that screams out control. That screams out yeah control. There's no other way I can say it. So yeah, um, I get the somewhat I get the nobility behind it you know trying to I guess guard your, guard their hearts with somewhere in there on that you know just trying to protect them from what's in the world and, and to some degree I agree with that because you know like I said I um, missed out on having to you know fork over like X amount of money every single day that I missed out on you know just the other the, the non-christian expectation no you know so you know I, I do feel like i missed out on a lot of stuff uh, in a good way by being involved with this um custom of encouragement dating uh, i was protected from a lot but at the same time it's just okay the control aspect the the loss of autonomy for the sisters all of that like you put that together i just can't be down with that anymore um and it's funny, a lot of people that I know who are ex, uh, ex-members ex refer to this as pity dating. Anytime I mention it to my wife, she always was like, oh, those are pity dates. I'm like, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. 
anyway, that's it. I rambled long enough. You guys have uh, have a good night. Uh, please hit that like button, that subscribe button, that share button, that notification bell. Leave me some comments. Share your stories with me in the comments. Um, let me know if you are interested in being interviewed and sharing your story. And that's it. I will see y'all at the next video. Peace.